Welcome to A Turn for the Better. I'm Dick Singh. This issue, we're going to do a little bit on measurements. Uh, I think it's one thing that a lot of folks don't do enough of. Myself, maybe it's my background, uh, being a tool and die maker and working out of quality control. Measurement was always a, a form of my life. And I've continued that over into wood turning, and I think it has helped. Uh, we'll start out first with spindle turning. There's a lot of different ways of checking the diameter or setting a diameter on a spindle. At times I'm criticized for being a little too precision, but I've grown up with these tools in my hand since 1960, and I know of nothing else that will check a diameter any better, faster, or easier than a micrometer. Another tool that I, I find very, very useful, especially it has a larger capacity, and that is a vernier caliper. Uh, they're very accurate, being thin, they slip into a lot of places, and they will also check an ID or an OD. There are a lot of radius gauges. This one happens to have all the common sizes in one sixteenths. In other words, you could just fit it onto your piece as you're turning or just go up and check a diameter to make sure it's the proper size that you wanted. Here is another direct reading caliper. It will actually give you what size you're checking as you're doing it. In other words, you could put this on at say three inches, make your cut, and when it gets to two, it's good, or you could set it at two lock it and use it like a conventional caliper. This is basically another size, just a different brand. Does the same thing, only it doesn't have a lock on it. Now we get to the real workhorses. Just plain OD calipers. They come in a multitude of sizes. I was once told I got this one at Toys R Us but I like little ones. Uh, they fit in your hands. When it comes to using these, you would like a lot of them. If you find them at, at garage sales or something, it's always good to take and buy a couple extra. If you're doing a spindle, you can have four or five of these set to a specific diameter, and instead of resetting it every time, just grab another caliper. This is just a regular divider. Uh, we use it a lot for laying out circles. You can also go in and set a diameter on, on a face plate. They're very, very useful. This is an inside caliper. In other words, if you are boring a piece and you want to check the diameter of the hole, all you have to do is set it and go with whatever you need. Now we're going to get into the very, very precision high-tech tools called an open end wrench. There is a multitude of sizes. They range sometimes 16 to 30 seconds. All you would have to do is make your cut and follow through and that diameter is going to give you your tenon size. Let's make a cut on the lathe and I'll show you how I use them. The first thing we want to do is set our caliper for whatever diameter we want which is very simple. Just put the, your scale on one leg and set per se. One of the things I think we should talk about a little bit, these points that are going to be contacting the work, you do not want any sharp burrs on those at all. If they're a good precision piece of the equipment, there's no burrs to begin with. But some of the cheaper ones may have burrs which you want to remove because they are definitely going to catch on you at some time or other. So we'll just take our parting tool. We set the diameter. Now if you were doing a spindle per se and you had multiple diameters we could also take another one that we've already preset. Just for you skeptics, 
let's take and use our good old end wrench. The only problem I'll have, I'll have to take more than one cut. Now we have a three-quarter tenon. Okay, for you folks who have not used a micrometer, they are very, very simple. Each one of these lines is 25 thousandths. In other words, when you get to the one, that is four lines, or four times 25 is 100 thousandths. On the other barrel, you will find 25 numbers. If you line up zero with the baseline and you're on the eight, that means it's eight hundred thousandths. If you move it over to 20, that's 25, and 20 make 795. So it's just a matter of refreshing your, your high school math. Just for kicks, let's see how close we came with that wrench. Okay, we have 757. In other words, 7 over to the 5. I'm past the 5. I have to add 7 to 50. So we are now at 757, or believe it or not, with using the wrench, we came 7 thousandths from our exact diameter. Okay, to give you just an idea of what 7 thousandths is, a normal piece of paper runs approximately three thousandths. So we've come within two paper thicknesses with that wrench. Seeing how our kerf is narrower and I can't get in with the micrometer, I'm using the vernier caliper. I had set this at an inch and an eighth. Now this reads exactly like the micrometer, only instead of being around the barrel, it's on the slide. So we've got an inch, 125 thousandths, which is dead nuts on for our inch and an eighth. Even a blind squirrel finds an acorn occasionally. Now do we really need all this precision? I feel we do. I mean, maybe, maybe we don't need it absolutely perfect, but it sure doesn't hurt anything. If you're gonna be haphazard about measurements, your work is going to be haphazard along with them. So why not utilize the best of your ability and measure right? It gives you a little sense of pride and gives you the, the feeling that my piece is put together properly. Don't slack off on any of your abilities. Let's move on to bowls. Bowls present a little different problem uh, from spindles as it's difficult sometimes to get in and you do want to catch it at a 90 degree angle to the surface and sometimes that gets to be a problem depending on the shape of the bowl. Probably the most common of the calipers used to measure bowls are the figure eights. In other words, you just go in, check them, and look at the opposite end and you can see what the thickness is. They come in a lot of different sizes, configurations, different ways of getting into different bowls. Our normal caliper can be used. Here is an old one that I've had for many years. It's a direct reading. It's plastic. Uh, I believe there was some kind of a patent infringement or something and they're not made anymore. Although there are metal ones that are very similar to it. This was its mate. Just two different shapes. This is one that you can set, take out, and it'll return to its setting. Occasionally you run into a situation where nothing wants to work for you. So I made my own, just a piece of aluminum, and I set uh, increments on it, 
When I made my increments of, for an eighth inch, I just put an eighth of an inch block in, marked it, put a quarter, marked it, and continued on. This just happened to allow me to get in to check one of my production items that I couldn't get easily. The figure eight caliper is very, very simple. Just go in and make your check and whatever you're seeing is what the thickness is. You can continue down and you can see there is much more material in the bottom of the bowl there than there is at the top. This is just an easy way of checking whatever your piece is. Our regular outside calipers will work only it's just a little more difficult to, to see. If we go down and take a, a reading and bring it up to the top we can see what our difference is which is right here. The only other problem that these present you can't get into a decent sized bowl. They're just not big enough. This one here has a much different shape onto it which would allow us to get into many more bowls. The thing with this one you just go in and set it. In fact it's just set now easy now I can bring it out and again it's a comparison between the as far as I was down there to here. The neat thing if this had a rim on here and I couldn't get this out I can open it up bring it back and it will return to its setting. So you could actually go in, go down, check the bottom, find out exactly what it is, set it, bring it out, and you'll know exactly what you have. This is my plastic one. I've used it for years and I like it. Mainly it's a direct reading and I can read on my gauge what it is when I go down. Just is kind of kind of unique. One of the things that you should do when you take and use calipers as such, the reading should be 90 degrees to the surface. In other words, if you take a reading as such where you're not 90 degrees, you're off on an angle, your reading will be much different there's the difference between 90 and just going in haphazardly. So whatever caliper you use or tool, you always want to get it in 90 degrees as it goes down. When we were doing the spindle, we were very much concerned with a set dimension. In other words, we were setting maybe a three-quarter inch tenon, whatever. When it comes to bowl work, we're really not particularly set upon making the wall thickness one quarter of an inch or three-eighths of an inch or whatever it would be. We base basically the wall thickness on what appears good, what feels good, sometimes what your nerves will stand. What these are going to do is strictly give you a comparison from the top down to the bottom which we want that wall thickness to be uniform and these present the means of getting that. Some people have potter's fingers and they can use them and get a good estimation or guesstimation. These will give you an honest reading. Now that we've covered spindles and bowls, Let's take one more challenge, and that's checking the wall thickness on a hollow vessel. This happens to be one of my Christmas ornaments that I hollow out, and the problem with checking it is I have a 5 8 diameter hole in it, and no matter what I do, I cannot get a tool in there without contacting both sides of the tool with the, the leg. In other words, I cannot get 90 degrees to check it. So what am I going to do? This little high-tech tool is called a coat hanger. Now the reason that I use coat hanger wire is it has memory. In other words, it's, it will return to its, its shape 
within reason. It also is easy to bend. Music wire would be much better, but it's more difficult to bend. Now, what I have done is made it where I can go in 90 degrees to the surface and check the whole surface to here. From there on, I'm not 90 degrees any longer. But if you use a little forethought where you make the other end, I can go in with that one and check it. Now, what am I checking? The gap is 5 sixteenths of an inch. If I put the leg on the inside and measure the distance on the outside, I've got a quarter of an inch, which tells me I have a wall thickness. One quarter minus 5 sixteenths leaves me 1 sixteenth of an inch. It's getting thin. While ever you want to make these, whatever form, configuration you need, it's very simple to make. This one's been used many, many times. I just make sure that the edges are radiused a little bit so that I don't scratch my, my piece as I go in to measure it. Keep the one leg on the inside and check the measurement on the outside. The best one I've got. One thing I would like to emphasize, I keep mentioning you want to be 90 degrees, and I would like to make sure that you understand what I'm talking about. That right there would be checking the surface at 90 degrees. You can see what I have for a gap. Now, if we check that at an angle, look at the difference. Watch, I'll go back to the other. So if you are going to get a direct reading with any of these calipers, you want to be 90 degrees straight up and down off of that surface. Just a little recap. What would be my favorite one? Probably the one that I'm using at the time that will accomplish what I needed to do. If I could only have one, it probably would be my old standby outside calipers. They are probably the most versatile. A figure eight on a bowl is very, very necessary as far as I'm concerned. They're easy. It makes it simple to check. But I don't care what you do, you're going to run into a situation where the old standbys don't work piece of wire. Nothing like it. If you don't want that, you're doing a production run on something, make one, uh, make one yourself. Whatever you need to fit your situation, that's going to become the proper one to use. Well, I think that about covers it. And I hope today's demo has measured up to your expectations.